727 B C K Triple Eight 727 Beck. I gotta go to Carla in Brooklyn. Hello, Carla. Hi, uh, Glenn. It's so great to get in touch. Listen, there are two evils in this bill. I call the health care portion of it the enslavement of the American people. I call the education portion the student loan takeover. That's the enslavement of the youth of America. Yes. That is where the indoctrination is going to be, the, uh, the, the quid pro quo. You know, there's no free lunch here. What do you want if you want a student loan? It's going to be the indoctrination camps. It's the youth service. It's all of that stuff. And it's the youth vote. And this is how he's covering his behind. Yeah, no, no, yeah. This is this is blocking the door. And this is, you know, give me the quote from uh, USA Today, uh, Stu, will you? From uh, Barack Obama. You remember the Barack Obama USA Today thing where he said that um, um, reparations don't go far enough. I mean, th those are his own words during the campaign. Reparations don't go far enough. You need universal health care and guaranteed universal education. When you have when you have those two things, then you'll have reparations. Well, th we have them now. We have them now. Universal education and universal health care. And the universal education, the great thing is they control the money. Now, who do you think is going to get the money to go to colleges? Who do you think... What, what kind of pressure do you think is going to be on those colleges to teach what the government says you need to teach? Otherwise, no federal dollars. And, and, and not just that. It's also, what are you going to have to do to get that loan? You're going to have to do, quote, community service. You are going to be indebted to your life for your education to the great supreme leader. This is classic Bill Ayers. This is absolutely the Bill Ayers, Chairman Mao portion of, of this entire uh, manifesto. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right, Carla. But here's the good news. When this stuff, people are waking up, and I mean regular people are waking up. The political people have been awake. They were awake during the campaign. Then we had him come into office, and they started spending all this money. And then others started to wake up. I'm telling you, this is a snowball. This is a snowball that is not going to be stopped. And it's going to crush absolutely crush anyone who says that they're for big government crush them doesn't matter which party the idea that you can negotiate with these radicals is over because they didn't crush the republicans remember that when all your friends said well the republicans said no 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 this took a year the republicans were never on board this took a year to suck the life and destroy the Democratic Party. <laughs> Not the Republicans. The Republicans are standing on the sidelines. They had no power to stop it. They had to bribe and arm twist the Democrats. Now, all of those Democrats have to be thrown out because they're all dirty. Last night, there was the idea that um, they may not pass the, um, the fix-it bill. You know they have to have a they have to have a reconciliation bill go through the Senate, and they there was um, uh, word last night that the Republicans could stop that, and so it wouldn't pass. And I thought to myself, now what do you Democrats do? You Democrats like Stupak, who, out of all the people that are going to lose their soul, I mean I don't want to stand and judge of somebody's soul, but yes you do, you, yes I do, yeah, you but do. I'm going to for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Out of all the people that have a chance of, who I want to be in line behind at judgment seat, I want to be by, I want to be right behind Stupak. Because I think it'll be like, hey, did you see what that guy was doing? I mean, <laughs> I'm a piece of cake compared to that guy, huh? Oh, sure, I got my problems, but did you see that? This guy says that he is for, um, for life. He's standing up because it's about life. He believes that abortion is murdering children. How exactly do you buy into the fact that um, a, an executive order can change the law? There's not a lawyer that understands constitutional law in the world, on other planets, that think that that is true. It's not. And if it is true, you've just created a dictatorship. 
So let me ask you, Congressman Stupak, what's your answer there? Because, see, a lot of Americans are going to be watching your every move now. Every single move. We should be watching your bank account. We should be watching where you go for vacation. We should be watching what jobs you get in the future. We should be watching your district because you got some sort of payoff. I don't know what it was, but you got a payoff of some sort. And at some point, you're going to go and collect. See, it's a lot like all of these Democrats. I, I wondered last night, they couldn't back out. If, if the Senate was going to say, you know what, we can't pass the fix-it bill, they couldn't back out. Because they already went into bed and got into bed with the devil and made a deal. And all you have to say now is, oh, really, you're going to do that? Well, I'd hate for the American people find out about this position here that we we agreed that we were going to give you boy that'd be awful for you wouldn't it they're done they're done they're corrupt and they now are in bed with the mob and there's no way out once you're in bed with these guys there's no way out but just like when you know somebody robbed the bank you know who it is all you have to do is just wait. Just wait. Because eventually they're going to spend the money. And when they do, you got them. Eventually, these people are going to lose their position and then be appointed to something. And then we'll have them. Eventually. I mean, Congressman, it's not that you're not going to be able to sleep between now and November. Sorry. I, I don't know how you're going to sleep ever because if you did anything wrong there are Americans who aren't going to sleep until you're behind bars you, you didn't you didn't just you didn't just uh, we don't just disagree with you you took liberty you took liberty you took the right to succeed you took the right to have a choice in health care there are eternal ramifications for that one but you go ahead and face the judgment bar later in the meantime you're gonna face us in November and you're also going to have people who will live to uncover what you've done I mean, I was talking to somebody late last night. Can you even imagine what the book is going to be like that comes out? And there's going to be somebody that writes a book. Because all of you people, all of you people that were, were bargaining last night, you're all greedy. You're all greedy. So what do I have to offer? Do I have to offer $10 million to somebody that will tell me the real story and write the book? Is that what I have to offer? Because I'll offer $10 million. Who's going to tell me what really happened over the weekend and write the book? I can tell you right now, I'll publish it. I'll personally put up the $10 million. It will sell millions of copies. So it's only a matter of price and time. That's it. Because somebody's there. Somebody's there just for the money. That's it. See, we believe in something. <laughs> the people surrounded by you, he, if you believe in it, you're stupid. If you think everybody else around you believes in it, you're out of your mind. Somebody will tell the story. And when they do, I'd hate to be you. I'd hate to be you. But enjoy your day. Enjoy your day. Be like Dr. Laura. Now go on and take on the day. Go ahead. Enjoy it while you can.